This is a tissue section of an ovary. And similar to other organs, it can be divided into a cortex and a medulla. And in the cortex, this is where we're going to see the ovarian follicles in various stages of development. As well as inside the medulla, this is where we're going to see um, contributions from the ovarian artery and the ve ovarian vein. But if we look on the most external surface or outer coat of the ovary, we'll say, see a layer of simple cuboidal epithelium. This is our germinal epithelium. And this, uh, the germinal epithelium gets its name from early histologists who thought the germ cells that are found, essentially are the oocytes, were derived from this cell layer. But this is actually not the case. We know that the germinal epithelium is essentially our peritoneum that is continuous with the broad ligament. So in this case, the mesovarium is continuous with this layer of cells because it covers the entire surface of the ovary. And just deep to the germinal epithelium, we'll see a layer of dense irregular connective tissue. This is the tunica albuginea, similar to what we saw in the male testes. And if we go further deeper into the cortex, we'll see all these wavy cells that are found amongst the ovarian follicles. These are called stromal cells and essentially provide a substance and support for the ovarian follicles. So if we look at specific stages of follicular development, we can see this cell in the center of the field. This is called a primordial follicle. It consists of a single layer of flattened cells, also known as follicular cells, and they surround the oocyte. So here we can see the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and the nucleolus of the oocyte. And as the primordial follicle begins to develop, the layer of follicular cells that's surrounding it is going to increase in size. So we can see this is a primary follicle, and then the follicle cells that are follicular cells that are surrounding it are now more cuboidal in shape, but we can still see the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and the nu nucleolus of the theocyte. And eventually, this primary follicle is going to develop multiple layers of these follicular cells. So if we look at a multilaminar primary follicle, we can see that it has multiple layers of these cells. And these cells are no longer called follicular cells, they're called granulosal cells. So we have a layer of, it's called the stratum granulosum, these granulosal cells. And here we can see the uh, oocyte with its nucleus. But separating the oocyte from these granulosal cells, we'll see this dense glycoprotein-rich structure, which is called the zona pellucida. And then surrounding the the multilaminar follicle, we'll see these layers of uh, stromal cells begin to surround and become more developed in shape. And we'll see this, it becomes more prominent when we look at a secondary follicle. So this is a secondary follicle, and right away we can notice that it has multiple layers of these granulosal cells. And amongst the granulosal cells, we see these spaces, these white spaces, and essentially this is a fluid that's starting to build up and in some cases all these pockets or spaces of fluid coalesce into one single chamber this is called an antrum and the antrum is filled with a fluid called liquor folliculi which contains many hormones uh, such as progesterone, estradiol, inhibin, folliculostatin, and activin and they help regulate the release of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone but uh, these granulosal cells have a unique relationship with these outer cells that are surrounding the follicle. So the, the stromal cells um, have a specific name in this region, and they're called the theca folliculi, and they can be subdivided into two regions. So we have a theca externa, which is simply just a layer of fibrous connective tissue that surrounds the follicle. But the internal layer, or the theca interna, is an, has a close relationship with the granulosal cells. So the theca interna is separated from the granulosal cells by a basement membrane. But the theca internal cells, if we looked at them with the electron microscope, they'd have features 
of a steroid producing cell, such as an elaborate smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And this is important because these cells of the theca interna are going to secrete androstenedione, which is going to be converted into estradiol or estrogen by the, the enzyme aromatase, which is found in these granulosal cells. So this is considered a secondary follicle, and we'll see how th the features of this uh, follicle is different from the most mature form, the mature or graphene follicle, on the next slide. We can see that it's characterized by this large, fluid-filled antral cavity, or space, and we can see that the granulosal cells have been pushed off to the side. And in this case, we can see uh, granulosal cells here in this mass of cells. This is called the cumulus euphorus. and provides a substance or bed for the oocyte to sort of sit in. And it's adhered to the lateral boundary or lateral wall of the follicle. And during ovulation, this mass of cells is going to float freely inside the antral cavity. And then during ovulation, it's going to be released. And there's a layer of cells that is important that is directly surrounding the oocyte. It's a single layer of cells that is found immediately adjacent to the zona pellucida. And this is called the corona radiata, or crown of cells. So this is important for during ovulation when the, the oocyte is going to be floating through the uterine tubes. The spermatozoa is going to have to navigate through this layer of corona radiata. It's going to have to pass through the zona pellucida, and a single sperm is going to allow be passed through this, this passageway to fertilize a single egg. So these are sort of the major features of the mature or graphene follicle.